Well, back with another video. Hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome to the channel if you are new to the channel. I'm Barry Mumford. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Nikon 1430S on the Z system. And I'm going to be kind of comparing it to the lower 14 millimeter um, F4 lens, which has some really unique characteristics and why I'm actually going to be keeping both of them. So yes, welcome to the channel folks. If you are new to this channel, this channel is all about photography, reviews, photography tutorials, behind the scenes, Photoshop, all the photography goodness. So if you like that kind of thing, why not consider subscribing to the channel? I would love to see you guys follow along for the ride. I've kind of put a bit of a table here because I was a, I felt a little bit exposed in some of the videos when there's nothing between you and me and the camera. So I'm hoping the video, this table looks better in the video. Um, so we'll see. And I might make a, a kind of a permanent fixture. So I think it should look quite good. So let's get into the video. The 14 to 30 F4, I've just acquired that. Now I did actually have the 2.8 in my basket when I was uh, looking at buying this lens. But I actually went through my full Lightroom catalogue and I've never actually shot at 2.8 super wide. Even down to 18 millimeter, I've never shot a 2.8. I've um, always shot around about f4, f5.6. Now I specifically bought the 1430 video. That was the main reason that I've bought it. And I've got to say, I'm super happy with the purchase. It's a fantastic lens. The resolution out of the lens, the sharpness, the color, everything is just absolutely superb. And I think that f4 is a sweet spot for video. So that lowest aperture on the Z6 II, for me, it's a perfect combination. So I'm not going to miss out on the lower apertures. If ever I did need that, I'd probably just rent a lens, to be honest. I would still be saving a lot of money buying this lens over the 2.8 um, obviously also it's a lot like that for the gimbal work on the slider and just carrying about in general so really happy with this lens um, also the um, fillers a lot easier to add an 82 millimeter filter i think it's 82 mil yes 82 mil filter to the front of this uh, lens so there's a lot of a lot of nd filters out there i can use circular polarizing fillers, all that kind of goodness on this lens, so it's going to work a treat. I've got some jobs coming up, which it's going to be perfect for, so looking forward to using that. And I may do a little bit more of an in-depth review of this lens further down the lane. I don't know, I'm not sure. It's a great lens. There's loads out there. You can go and check them out, but I wanted to kind of compare it to this lower 14 millimeter F4 lens because this has some really unique characteristics to it. This is a shift lens, um, which allows you to control your verticals in your images and in your video really by just pulling that lever up and down you can obviously adjust the verticals in your images it's really handy tool to have it's on a shift lens as such it's just for the vertical lens uh, the vertical lanes that you can adjust but why i love this lens and specifically why i love it for video because it's so wide i mean it's like 40 millimeter wide it's super wide it has a constant aperture of f4 it's obviously all manual focus but you can you can focus like ridiculously close. Like I could probably touch. The, I've actually got, this is a UV lens filter on the front of here. Now I never ever put, it's a bit dirty actually. I'm not one for putting any kind of UV filters on the front of my lenses, I never have. I kind of see the point in putting inferior glass on superior glass. But for this lens in particular, I didn't want to scratch the front element because you can pretty much touch the front element of this lens and still have it in focus. It's absolutely mind blowing how close you can actually get to this. I'll pop some samples up, you can see me using it and see how close you can actually get whilst focusing. Now for video, this is absolutely fantastic. It really is because it means you can get in close, almost like a macro shot, but have a really wide angle of view. So it's a super versatile lens. I've used it a couple of times in a couple of videos um, for YouTube, where obviously you can see all the dust flying around in this particular video. I've got this lens really close, you can see all the particles and dust. So the F4 aperture way just works so, so well. But being able to get that close with a lens at 40 millimeters wide, it's pretty phenomenal. I mean, you can get close with this, but this is still about, I think it's about in between 10 and 14 inches in the distance you can focus at. Um, so for video, the lower 40 millimeter F4 is a fantastic lens. Now, obviously the downside of this, obviously it is a manual focus lens. So you're gonna to have to manual focus, but that doesn't matter for video, that's perfect. Just obviously keep that same distance and everything's gonna be in focus all the time. The other downside is uh, it is nowhere near as sharp as the Nikon 
40 and a 30 f4. That was always going to be the case, obviously because the resolution of these these lenses are resolving for the higher megapixel count of the Z7 II and the upcoming Z9 are just resolving better images, sharper and sharper, better uh, contrast, better saturation, just overall an all round better system. Um, but having said that, with it being a little bit softer, it does give it its own characteristics look in the video that you're using or in the images that you're shooting. So it's not a downside really in any way, shape or form. It's still sharp enough for any kind of scenario, whether you shoot architecture or you shoot in video, um, it's still sharp enough. They have shot portraits with it and it's more than sharp enough. Obviously this is just goes to that next level of the 4030 on the Z. Um, but more than sharp enough. Really is a fantastic lens to use on the Z system and actually any other. This is obviously adapted for the Z system. You can obviously use it on your Canon, your Sony's and stuff like that. They do actually have a new version, I think, of this. They do actually have the F2 version, which is supposed to be zero distortion. I would like to get my hands on that and give that a look at and see what that, uh, see how that feels and see how it uh, performs. Because so far, this has been a really good buy. Now, this is actually relatively inexpensive for a 40 millimeter shift lens basically it was only 249 pound um which i know it's still a lot of money but at the same time for a 40 millimeter shift lens one that has that unique characteristic almost like a macro lens but a wide macro lens um for me that's a really versatile lens to have in the bag and that's why i won't be getting rid of this lens i'll be keeping this lens even though i have this 14 to 30 i'll probably use, use this more than i will this but on those specific times, if I'm shooting a product shot or I want some wide, nice and close in, um, this is going to be able to do just that. And obviously also for the architectural shots, I can kind of correct those lines. But to be fair, the uh, the distortion in this lens is very minimal. I've found that it's uh, it's really, really good. The lines are still nice and straight, comes straight out of the camera, takes very little little um, profile adjustment. So really, really good lens. Oh, that's the table just collapsing. So really, really good lens. So that's the lower 40 millimeter f4, and that's why I'm keeping that. But I've got to say that the 40 to 30 on the Z system is an absolute fantastic, fantastic lens. Nice and light, easy to carry around, nice and portable, and it's given great results every single time. And like I said, that f4 f4 is just that sweet spot for me in video. Um, and when it comes to photographs, I'm never shooting at f4 anyways. I'm always up around about 5.6 f8. So perfect combination for me, perfect weight. Super happy with that purchase, but I wanted to put this to video together because I had this for a while and I was supposed to do a review on it and I never did, so I thought it'd be good, kind of good to uh, compare both lenses together to show you guys uh, how they do perform. So you might be in the market for something like that and you might get something out of this video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up, really appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed, why not consider why not consider subscribing to the channel? I think I'm going to have to get it. A steady at table this is really rock and this is no good for the next video so with that being said folks thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please give it a thumbs up and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one see you then